Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. In today's video, we're gonna start working in Vivado. If you haven't seen it yet, a previous video details installation and setup. In this one, we're going to create a new project, go through some of the simple files you might expect to deal with, and learn a bit about the reports Vivado offers. The information in this video can be found in a lot more detail in the Xilinx document I've linked to below. As I often say, 90% of your time as an engineer is spent reading documentation. The other 90% is spent making videos. So we've launched Vivado, and the first thing we're going to do is create a new project. This is going to bring up the project wizard, which will guide us on our quest. I'm going to call my project Board Test, because that's what I'll be doing. I have a Nexus A7 with me, and I'll be testing some of the components out on the board. I'm going to save it under this directory. Next we select our Alpha project. There's a whole list here, and uh, let's start at the bottom. There are more detailed descriptions in the documentation, but for our purposes, example projects are quick projects you can upload to your board as a test, but these can actually be quite complicated and might not be applicable to the hardware you have. An imported project is selected when you're moving from a different piece of software into Vivado. IO planning is when you want to test input or output and kind of get to understand your device prior to specifying any RTL sources. Post synthesis projects allow us to import third party netlists and implement them on our hardware. And what we'll be using almost all the time is a register transfer level project. Here we write our HDL, import constraints, work with Vivado RP, and synthesize and implement the design. It also includes some great tools for testing and generating reports, which allows us to better analyze our design. Next, we're going to create a top-level module. You can call yours top, but I like to call mine the same name as the project, so board test. Now we're going to add constraints. I've included a link down in the description below that explains what constraints are, but essentially it ties the pins of an FPGA to the peripherals on the board, and defines a name for that connection or port. Constraint files for commercial boards can usually be downloaded from the manufacturer's website. Digilint keeps a repository of all their constraint files, so you can grab the appropriate one. There's a link down below. So to add the constraint file, select add file, browse to where you've downloaded it, and make sure you have copy constraint files into project selected. This will create a copy of the file that's local to your own project. Next, we need to choose our board. The parts page probably has every single Xilinx part supported by Vivado, but if you followed along in the previous video, we installed the board files. So, click on the boards tab and select the board you're using. For me, that's the Nexus A7 100T. Click next to review all your settings, and then finish. And that's it, you've created a project. The workflow in Vivado is shown here in the flow window, from settings all the way to generating a bitstream and uploading it. We've completed all the settings we needed in the project creation. We've got all the sources we need. Language templates is a useful feature which allows you to quickly grab some commonly used programming constructs. For example, we're using Verilog. Under Synthesis Constructs, Coding Examples, there's a bunch of stuff from adders to DSP logic and a bunch of other things, but we really don't need that now. RPN simulation we'll talk about in a different video. RTL analysis isn't really applicable for these projects, but one interesting feature is that it can show you a circuit for the HDL you've written. This can help you debug your code and how your signals are connected. And then we have what are basically the big three. Synthesis, implementation, and bitstream generation. Synthesis compiles and translates your HDL into what's called a netlist. Implementation takes this netlist and maps it onto the specific hardware you've chosen. Bitstream generation turns the implemented design into a bitstream, which can be downloaded and flashed onto the FPGA. Each process is dependent on the last, and, depending on the complexity of your project, they can take a while to run. Moving on to the sources window, we can see that we've got design sources, constraint sources, and simulation sources. That's all we'll really work with in these projects. We're going to go ahead and implement a pretty simple project so that we can understand the workflow and maybe even some of the reports. First thing we're going to do is ensure our constraints are correct. We need to ensure that the constraints file we've pulled in is the active constraints file for the project and we need to ensure that we can access the ports and peripherals that we want to. So we're going to go ahead and right click, then set as target constraint file, and opening it up, we see a bunch of commented out lines. But there are some instructions up top here, and it's as simple as uncommenting the lines and renaming them to the name we want to use in the project. 
So in this project, I just want to test some LEDs and switches. For this, I'll need a clock signal, as I'm going to be creating a sequential circuit. So we'll uncomment the clock and let's say two LEDs and two switches. I'm going to leave the names as they are, because it makes naming between projects consistent and thus easier to read. You can see there's a lot of other stuff in here, but we're not really concerned with that. So let's save that, just with Control S, and open up our top level module. This really isn't a video series on how to write Verilog, so I'm just going to do this. Cool. So you can see I've imported some super simple code that has two inputs, a clock and switches, and one output, LEDs. At every positive edge of the clock, I set one LED to be the value of the switch below it, and the other LED to be the inverse of the switch below that. So we'll save it, and now the moment of truth. Synthesis. We can view the output in the log tab, and any error messages will be reported in the messages tab. Once synthesis is done, we'll get a pop-up to run implementation. Hit OK, and implementation will run. While that's running, you can see there are more details under the Open Synthesized Design and Open Implemented Design tab. These are reports that can tell you a lot about your design. Keep in mind there may be differences between the two, as the netlist depends on the particular FPGA you're using. We'll get into reports in a bit. Now that implementation is done, let's generate a bitstream for upload. While that's happening, I'm going to go ahead and plug in the FPGA. The Nexus A7 has this lovely test pattern but we're going to change it to something much more boring. Back in Vivado, click Open Hardware Manager, and then Open Target. AutoConnect should work fine if all the drivers are installed. Now we can select Program Device, choose the board, and click Program. Moving back to the board, there we have it. The NOT switch, and the standard switch. And that's all there is to starting a project and uploading it to the board. Before we go, I'd like to show you one last thing. A big consideration when choosing an FPGA is the amount of resources available, things like lookup tables, flip-flops, and DSP units. More resources generally result in more expensive boards, so when we're working with HDL, we want to try and minimize resource usage. We can check resource usage for our board under Open Implemented Design. Select Report Utilization, and we'll get a few prompts. We're told how many as well as the percentage of resources that we're using. Of course this is a really simple design, so we're not going to be using much. We can also check things like timing and power reports. Design also shows a nice, simple summary. These are really useful metrics to add when reporting back on any designs you may be working with. And that's it. I hope you found this informative. Cheers for now.